Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at race condition. So, what is race condition? So, race condition is a problem very common in the computer world, and usually it's used to describe things with uh, processes and memory and is very common in multi threading. But for us, our multi threading are two customers trying to check out an item at the same time. So, what I mean by that is Imagine if you have only one item left in stock and you have two customers on your website, they both add it to their cart. They both at the same time, then check out and then an order is placed. All right. And when they both place an order, you're going to end up with minus stock. So you will have to supply something that you don't have. And that is generally the principle of race condition that the state is accessed from two different places at the same time. So the way we handle this in our application, when the customer wants to place an item in their cart, we're going to put the quantity that they want to order on hold, right? So at that point, we're going to subtract the quantity that they want to buy. So for this, we want to go into our domain layer. And let's go into models and let's create a table or rather a model uh, stock on hold .cs. right and in here we want to supply the ID and then stock ID it's also a uh, supply of the property stock now let's put a space here all right uh, next thing we want to do is we don't want to know how much is there on hold and the next thing we want to do is we want to supply a date time and um, what we want to say is right when does this expire right so expiry date all right so let's go ahead to our database and let let's add this table okay so let's close that and let's close this as well. So remember, we're doing this when we want to put the item in our cart. So let's go to our application layer and specifically we do this in our add to cart. What we want to do is pass our application DB context. Make it global as usual. And before we do all of this, what we want to do is we want to get the stock. So stock to hold. And we want to get, we want to go into our context. Stock where ID equals request stock ID. Right? And let's not forget to cast it to list, or rather, not even list. Let's just select first our default, since we're gonna have all the properties in there of the quantity and everything like that. And there is only one stock with that stock ID. So this is the stock that we want to hold. So first of all, let's run a check that stock to hold quantity is more or equals than what we are requesting. All right. And then we want to proceed. So really, if it's less, we want to, uh, let's put this here, return not enough stock. OK. All right. So if there is enough stock, this is where we want to create our stock that we want to hold. So let's go into our stock to hold and let's add a new stock on hold. Okay, and what we want to do is add the stock ID. We want to add the quantity, so what we requested. And we want to set the expiry date. So what we want to do is date time using system, grab.now. And then add 
minutes and let's add 20 minutes. So we want to hold it for 20 minutes. All right. And at this point, let's await context. All right. So let's quickly change this to async task and let's return Boolean for now. Okay. So context save changes async. <clears throat> All right, so one thing we don't want to forget to do is the stock that we're holding. The quantity here, we want to set it, we want to subtract it. Like so. So now the quantity that we store in our table changes. So if somebody tries to grab an item and add it to their cart, and we won't, we're not going to have that item. We're basically going to say, right, we don't have that item. Uh, you'll have to come back later when we restock. So at the end here, let's return true. So this is really our only condition is, do we have enough stock to give you? So return false, right? So if we ever hit this false, we know there is not enough stock because there is a, a, not a, any other condition. So returning Boolean at this point is Quite all right. If we're going to implement more checks, you want to consider returning a tuple, for example. So a Boolean and a string. So if it's going to be true, you don't need to use the string, which will be a message. Or And if it's going to be false, you want to pass a message like not enough stock or you're not allowed to buy this item because you're not over 18 or whatever. So in that department, you can later get creative. But this is what we'll do for now. Another thing we want to do is, before we sort of uh, go to test this, is, right, so we have this stock on hold. How do we free it up? And really, I think the best place to do this is when we get the product, right? So when the view, uh, user gets the product, so before we hit the stage of adding it to cart, right? So we try to get the product and then at that point we check, right, is it free? Because that's when we're going to sort of display the UI of items in stock or how much stock we got left, etc. So let's go to our products and let's go to get product. And here where we have our nice, ex nice expression, let's destroy it. And Click return here. Well, bam, let's indent this a little bit and create some space. So here, what we want to do is we want to get the context and we want to check the stock on hold, the stock on holds, on holds, on hold, and rather stocks on hold, right? I think that more, makes more sense. So we got our stocks on hold and we want to get where uh, expiry date is less than date time dot now. Okay, and let's grab to list and let's say stock on hold. Okay, so if we have any, or rather, let's do count. So if count is more than zero, this is where we want to sort of uh, um, remove this stock and uh, put it back into our actual stock, which we can display. Let's create another variable here and let's call it stock to return because we're returning this stock to our stock. All right. Or rather maybe even refilling, but you, you get the picture. So let's go into our stock and where. Now we want to go into stocks on hold. Uh, any where any stock ID here equals to the stock ID and we want to do to list. Okay, 
So now we have our stock on hold and we have uh, the stock that we want to return, right? And remember, we are tracking this, so we don't need to call update. So now for each stock in stock to return, we want to restore the quantity. Okay, so stock quantity equals stock quantity plus stock on hold, where, or rather not where, hold first uh, or default stock ID equals stock ID, right? And let's grab the quantity here. Okay. So once we returned all the stock, this can be multiple items. So I think it's better to handle all these items. So once we handle all this, let's go ahead into our table stocks on hold. And let's remove all the stock that we grabbed from there. Okay. And then we want to wait. Context. Uh, let's again let's make this async task but a bush okay save save changes async boom and clean this up a little bit okay cool uh this should be all right um so again when we place an item in the cart we want to remove it from our, our stock and add it to the uh, stock on hold with the expiry time of 20 minutes. And we want to, when we go into a product, we want to get any stock that we're holding that has expired. So the expiry time has to be below the current time. And for any items that we do grab from uh, the stocks on hold, we want to basically grab the uh, the reference of that from our stock table restore the quantity and then we want to remove the range and um, basically from the stock on hold so we clean up the stock on hold table so next time we enter an order we don't end up with extra stock okay so let's go ahead and see this work but before that we actually need to run some migrations so let's collapse all of this let's go into our database and let's run .net if um, Again, startup project. And migrations. Um, stock on. Uh, it's a good idea to not have uh, any spaces in your migrations, by the way. Otherwise, later on, it may be troublesome to restore so just remember that as a small tip all right build failed uh, perfectly acceptable uh, we added two async methods so let's build it like so so we can get some errors in our debugger okay so first of all here we need to pass in our context we need to make this async Task and on get here as well. This needs to be a sync task, and we wanna we need to await this. Our result equals await, and this is gonna be a boolean. So if Uh, maybe rename this to stock added if stock was added then redirect to cart else um, let's return to page and then also let's put a little comment to do add a warning <clears throat> okay so this is where you might want to consider having your requests for your services implement from a 
abstract class and the abstract class will would contain these sort of like little errors that you can like then you can still return this model that you're sort of binding to the page but then it updated with the error that you need so for now i'll just leave this to do as i think what you learned in this uh, these tutorials implementing something like that shouldn't be a bother we got that let's go ahead and again try to do our migrations cool delete all of this uh, database update cool uh close this one thing i just want to go into add to cart to make sure i haven't messed up as the stock id and id was quite confusing to go around because in the stock hold we do use ID for something else. So stock to hold, stock it. Okay, yep. I'm happy with that. Let's run. Let's go ahead and add to cart. Let's put a breakpoint here. Let's open our SQL Server Explorer and let's go ahead into our local database and my shop tables. And let's open up two tables. Let's open up a stock on hold. Let's open up stock. Okay. So what we want to do, test update. And let's grab one. Click submit. And there we have it. So stock to hold. So we got the exact one we need. Uh, we have enough quantity. And blah blah blah, it's saving. Continue. Cool. Go into here, refresh. So this quantity changed to seven, stock on hold. There we go. And there we have the expiry date, right? So that's working. Let's go ahead and now see how it's going to handle returning it back to stock. So time now is 18, 1958. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the time to bizarre like 7 a.m., right? And now what should happen is this entry should get deleted and this quantity should be set back to 8. Now let's refresh it. Quantity is back to 8 and this entry is deleted. Uh, one thing though that we are not handling is the cart, but this was sort of a test that we run. So imagine we take away the stock from hold, but you still have the cart with the item. So let's go ahead into our startup here. And where we have the max age for the cart, let's go ahead and set it to from minutes and set it to 20 minutes. Okay, but this will be it for this episode. Hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. If you like the videos, if you like the series, click the thumbs up, subscribe. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. As, the, as we're coming up to the end of this tutorial, you might wanna leave a comment on what you wanna see me do next. But other than that, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.